Hey kids, welcome to Rob's Red Hotspots. Uh, I haven't made a Hearts by Four video in a long time, but I'm playing a lot and I wanted to make a video on a particular topic, something that has really changed the way that I play the game that I think could be helpful for a lot of newer players or returning players. I want to talk about how to optimize your air, land, and naval XP, especially in the early game. I've seen a lot of videos, like a huge number of videos that talk about like the best templates for tanks, the best templates for planes, the best naval design, stuff like that, but not a lot of them tell you how to get the experience to actually make those designs and how to not waste your experience. I've come up with like kind of a system for doing this that works really well. It takes a little bit of effort, but like it's not super micro intensive if you sort of know what you're doing. So I'm going to show you the basic principles of this and how to ad how to adapt it to um, what you want to build and stuff like that. We're going to make heavy use of the auto upgrade button. So that's this little button down here, auto upgrade. Now, what does this button do? If you tick the button, you hit save. Every time you research a tech that is at all related to tanks, planes, or ships, it's going to update any modules. Let's take a look at a ship here, the FGH class here. So it's going to update any module that you have better technology for. It doesn't matter what the tech is, as long as it is a naval related tech or an air related tech or a tank related tech. I'll give you an example. This destroyer here has level one AA, but we actually already have level two AA as the um, UK and we've got a better fire system. So if we research any naval tech or any naval related tech, these will automatically upgrade and it will cost us zero, zero uh, naval experience. The same goes for your airframes and your tanks. And it, what it's going to do is it's going to produce a new model. It's not going to update stuff that's already in your queue, but it's going to produce a new model that you can put into production. Like if you do this systematically, you are going to save dozens if not hundreds of experience points and this is especially valuable in the early game and it's especially valuable for democracies and allied nations that don't necessarily have a lot of cheap means to get army and air experience in particular are hard to get for a lot of allied nations so it's it's, it's really going to save you a huge amount of xp it's going to allow you to spend that xp more wisely on more important things like doctrines or spirits and things like that so we're going we're to start by uh, looking at tanks and airframes and ships and I'm going to give you some examples from the UK point of view of what you can do. You can do this for any country though and I advise that when you're loading up a new country uh, if you follow the kind of steps that I'm doing here uh, you're going to be able to develop a system for that country that makes sense and that gives you designs that you can use. This is not a guide on what are the best designs this is a guide on how to get designs cheaply uh, but most of the time as you're going to see we're going to be able to adapt those designs to be really 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 high performing design. So starting with tank designs, what you're going to want to do when you load up your country is you're going to want to open up the uh, tank interface here and right away let's hit show outdated equipment. Some of these tanks are kind of really shitty and most of the time a lot of you guys are going to like ignore these and, and not necessarily use them but let's take a look at some of the stats here. So here for example the Vickers 6 ton there's the A and the B. This one's got a one-man turret and a heavy machine gun and it's also got an additional heavy machine gun on it. The Vickers 6B here has a small cannon and a heavy machine gun so if we wanted to auto update this, we could research the 1938 tank tech and start with a tank that already has a heavy machine gun loaded. Uh, and it's also got a two man turret. So that's one option. We could, of course, just stick with this light tank here. Uh, it's got smoke launchers. Uh, it has starts with a radio, so that's good. Uh, and then heavy machine gun and a two-man turret. But the tank that I actually prefer here is the light tank Mark IV. And the reason is because it has the Christie suspension. So the most expensive modules to change on a tank in the early game are going to be the suspension, the armor type, and the engine type. So what I would advise you do for your tanks is look through your tank models and pick the one, don't necessarily pick the one with the best turret or the best main armament, but pick the one with the suspension that you want to use. So I like fast tanks. Uh, I don't want to use this tank necessarily. I do think that I'm going to want to use a tank with a Christie suspension. So I want to save like this. It's going to cost me six naval or sorry, six land XP to change the suspension on on this tank when I get the new model. So I'm going to hit I'm going to tick the auto upgrade button here and I'm going to hit save. And actually, because I already have because I already have a light tank Mark six in production, what I'm going to do is I'm going to recommission the Mark four, decommission the Mark six and check this out. I just lost 
five production efficiency and I'm, I'm producing a tank that has uh, a, a substantially like it's a substantially faster tank we can use the we can turn these into recon tanks or we can turn them into uh, anti-air tanks we can turn them into we can make changes once this upgrades to the improved light tank chassis we can go and for like if we want to let's say we want to put an auto cannon on this that's going to cost you one xp versus the six xp that you're going to get for the suspension so base the basic gist for tanks is look at the suspension look at the armor this one costs eight to change look at the suspension look at the armor and look at the engine type these modules are much 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 cheaper to change some of them are more expensive but most of them cost like one xp like sloped armor here is a pretty big upgrade but most of the minor upgrades you're going to do you can make a pretty powerful tank by spending very little XP. The same goes for the interwar medium one here. This is not a super great example. It does start with the three man turrets and a small cannon and a radio. So it's probably worth it anyway. Like we're gonna save at least three XP. When we research the 1938 medium tank, we are gonna have to change the suspension on this if we don't wanna use a bogey suspension. If you do want to, then that's great. You've already got your tank. But we have an end game turret on this tank already, which would cost us one XP to change. And then, you know, you can still Stick with the small cannon here if you're short on XP or if you want to get something with more soft attack like a close support gun or something or a howitzer or something like that then you can play around with that and change this afterwards. For now I'm just going to save this so that when we research the the 1938 medium tank we're going to be able to uh, automatically have a tank that's ready to build and we're not going to have to spend like 10, 20, 30 uh, XP to get a functional tank going. Even if it's not the design that like the perfect design for us, at least we're going to have something that we can start building, start building up production efficiency as soon as that model becomes available. As soon as I research this, uh, an, an identical design to that with the same module layout is going to be automatically created for free. So this is how you should be doing your designs in the early game. You should not be spending 30 army XP that you need to be like taking a doctrine or taking an army spirit or something that's actually really, really useful for you to make like a, you know, a tank from scratch. Use the resources that you start with wisely. That's the gist of this um, video. Let's look at air next. It's really useful to do this at the start of the game. Delete your entire air force. What this is going to do is it's going to allow us to take a look at our stockpile. So the, the easiest way I find to look at the stockpile is just go into international market, sell equipment. Okay. So Let's just look at our airframe. So what have we got here? We've got 300 fairy, fairy Gordons. We've got some of these uh, Vildebeest planes. Uh, we've got another naval bomber type here. Um, we've got these are carrier carrier um, airframes. And we've got these super old fighters. And then we've got 240 of these um, medium airframes, interwar medium airframes. So there's a couple of options of what you can do with these interwar airframes. If you don't want to use any of them, then I would say that in, at the start of the game, uh, airframes are the most cost effective way. Like you can turn these airframes into civilian factories, temporarily anyway, and give yourself a boost to your construction by selling them right at the start of the game. That's 70,000 mile points. That's way better. Like compare that to convoys. That's 126 for selling 903 convoys. That's a lot of convoys and convoys actually are useful. Whereas like if you're not going to do anything with these planes, uh, this is a much, 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 much better deal than selling your convoys. However, we're not going to be doing that this time around. I'm going to show you how you can make use of old airframes, uh, again, using the auto upgrade feature. So I'm giving you a few different options here, and it's up to you to choose which one you want to use. I would say that you should always use the best available airframe for fighters. It's more important for fighters than it is for bombers. The reason is that fighters tend to fight other fighters. You are using your fighters to gain air superiority. You do not want to be building fighters that are just going to lose air battles and get shot down. You can build bombers that are using old shitty airframes as long as you use those bombers in areas where you are not going to get intercepted by fighters or in areas where you already have air superiority. So prioritize your fighters and use your older airframes to refit them as bombers. I'm going to show you a couple things that we can do here right away. Uh, so the B Bristol Blenheim is a medium airframe, so I'm going to set that to auto upgrade. Um, it doesn't really have much that's going to upgrade, but we're just going to do that so we don't forget. If we look at the text here. We actually already start with uh, basic small airframe. We just don't start with any designs. So we don't really have a choice. We are going to have to spend at least seven XP or something like that to get us ourselves a small airframe that is going to be uh, usable as a, as a mainline fighter. 
However, in terms of uh, bombers, like as the UK, we're not going to have a huge amount of IC to be building like a shit ton of CAS or a shit ton of um, tactical bombers or whatever it is we want to use, naval bombers, things like that. We, we were probably going to want to focus primarily on fighters. However, we have a lot of old airframes that are not completely useless. So take a look at this. Let, we're, we're, we have two, basically two categories of planes. We can't, we can't turn carrier planes into land-based planes or vice versa. Um, but one thing we could do, for example, like I don't want to be using these. So in the queue already, I have these interwar small airframes. I don't want to be using interwar small airframes. They're really not good. So I'm going to decommission those right away. Um, and interwar naval bombers, uh, you could use them if you want. So let's decommission this just for just for the sake of argument. Uh, the only interwar airframe that we're going to use is the Ferry Gordon. Take a look at this. It's got a level one engine and it's got um, one bomb lock. Now, if you look at the level one engine, what are what are we going to be able to do with this plane? With a level one engine, it's only got eleven thrusts. But check this out. Let's put another bomb lock on it. So already, without even upgrading the engine, we can get up to 12 ground attack. But that's only two experience that we're putting on. The bomb lock is two experience. If we auto upgrade, we're going to get the engine for free. So we're saving three air experience right there. Because this, uh, with a level two engine, this now has 16 thrusts. We're going to be able to put like extra fuel tanks on, uh, defensive turrets or whatever we want to do. So we can end up with, even though we're using an out of date airframe, we can end up with a plane that's ultimately useful. And because we, we've got like eight, we start the game with like 800 interwar airframes. So, you know, building interwar airframes when you don't have any, is it useful? No. But when you have 800, you have two choices, either sell them and change them for IC or refit them into something that is marginally useful and that basically costs nothing. So what I'm going to do to start is I'm going to set this up to auto upgrade. I've made all of the other interwar airframes. Um, I've decommissioned them so that they're marked as obsolete. And then we're going to go here. We're going to click on this one. And we're going to go to the Ferry Gordon. Right away, we've only lost, I think we've lost 15 production efficiency on this line that was already started. And then we're going to click here, convert from stockpile. Check this out. We're going from 3.5 per month to 2.28 per week. And that's without even any like production upgrades or anything like that. So, you know, we can just leave this in the queue for as and, until we burn through. There we go. There's we're going to be refitting just shy of 700 of these. By the time the war starts, it's quite possible that we're going to end up with like you know, six or seven hundred close air, you know, interwar close air support planes. That's going to make a difference on the battlefield, right? So we're actually making use of these older resources. The same principle, we don't have any carrier planes in production right now. So the same principle can be applied to the carrier planes. Uh, I do not recommend, once again, I do not recommend using out of date airframes for fighters. If you're going to put fighters on your carriers, they should be modern. Otherwise, otherwise they're just going to get shot out of the air, right? But the naval bomber, it's a little bit less important that it be a modern airframe. So once again, we're going to take this Blackburn Shark here. We're going to set it to auto upgrade. And I'm actually going to put some of those into production. We'll use Supermarine. Why not? There we go. So once again, nine per year, 1.8 per month. Uh, as soon as we get a little bit of air experience, we're going to design a fighter and start producing, uh, start producing like a hurricane, right? Uh, the other example that's really interesting for the UK is remember we have those 240 Hanley Page Hayfords and that's what this looks like. OK, it's got a medium bomb bay and it's got a level one engine. Now, take a look at some designs we can do with this. We're going to set it to auto upgrade again and we're going to recommission it. So but check this out. If we let the engine auto upgrade, which is a free upgrade, right? Right away, we have 25 thrusts and nine weight. So we can do all sorts of things with this. Stick a torpedo on it. Suddenly it's a patrol bomber. I think you can put up to two um, extra fuel tanks on this once we unlock that technology. So we can make use of these planes too. So what we're going to do is we're going to recommission this. We're going to set it to auto update. Just make sure everything here is set to auto update. And there we go. So right away, um, we, without spending any XP at all, we've got four planes that you can be used in four different roles using equipment that we already have that can be produced for like, like tiny, tiny, tiny amounts of, of industrial capacity. And I'm going to show you the results of this at the end of the video. Next up, let's take a look at, uh, ships. It's always a good idea. It's generally a good idea to build the starting ships. Like the cheapest ship you can build is a ship that's already half built. 
right? So it's good to keep these holes in the production queue, uh, but we don't necessarily want to use the Myos that are already assigned. So I want to keep these cruisers, but I don't really want to use Camel Laird. Camel Laird is like kind of like uh, it's a battleship Mayo. Like you can't use it. You can only use it for battleships and cruisers. Um, and I might build some heavy cruisers, but I'm not going to build very many. And I'm probably just going to refit the old ones. So I don't actually think this is this useful because we can't use this for um, any carriers that we might build later or carriers that we might re refit. So I'm going to switch these over to Harlan and Wolf. Now, you'll notice that Camel Laird has a production output bonus of 5%. So we are going to lose 5% production output on this cruiser. But there's another way to look at that, and that is that we're going to get 5% more Mayo experience. So I'm going to put all these Leander class cruisers onto Harlan and Wolf so that I can start building up experience. Uh, obviously, the submarines are just going to stay on John Brown & Co. Uh, the, the destroyers, uh, in terms of whether you stick with Yarrow, which gives you bonuses to um, uh, anti-submarine stuff, or whether you stick with, whether you move them over to Harlan and Wolf, it's going to depend on how many dockyards you're going to build. If you're not going to build any dockyards, then I would say switch these over to Harlan and Wolf right away. It's going to take a little bit longer to build them, but that you know, you're probably not you you with with like. 19 dockyards, you're not going to get enough experience to use like like three different Mayos and to get good bonuses from three different Mayos. So if you're going to go with a pretty lean naval build, like this is a good way to start. Just put everything into one Mayo except for the two subs here that we can't change. Uh, John Brown & Co. is also a, a really good Mayo. It's got good bonuses for cruisers and good bonuses for subs. So it's, it's not a bad one to have around. You can also use this for battleships. So if you do end up building or refitting any battleships, but you're not going to make that a main focus of your fleet, then just um, use John Brown & Co. You can essentially use Use your battleship Mayo to improve your submarine. So that's just a little side tip here. Next step, I'm going to look at some of our starting designs. So let's just go one by one with the various designs. In terms of auto updates for ships, you cannot use the auto update feature in order to do refits. Take a look at this. We've got we've got a level one sub with only one torpedo tube, and we've got a level two sub, or sorry, level one sub with two torpedo tubes. Okay. So let's say that I wanted to make a uh, level one sub that is a mine laying sub, right? So I'm going to keep this class. What I'm going to do is I'm going to auto update this class. I'm going to get a little bit of naval experience. I'm going to add on the mine laying, uh, the mine laying slot here so that I have the option to build mine laying subs. So for like, and that's only going to cost me the mine laying tube is going to cost me five naval experience for it, right? Rather than designing the sub from scratch here. It's going to save us a little bit of experience there. So that's one option. This one here could be like the subs that we're actually going to use for convoy rating because it's got two torpedo tubes. So it's got like the maximum amount of firepower. So we're going to get we're going to actually auto update both of these and build two different subs with the same hull. So that's that to me, like it's really cool to take a mix of older hulls and put them into kind of subsidiary roles, right? Uh, the same goes, okay, so the same goes for destroyers. So let's take a look at uh, different classes that we have here. The um, A, B, C, D class, uh, this is an anti-submarine. This is an a, like an or, sort of early ASW ship. It's got sonar and it's got depth charges, right? It does not have any AA. Now, you know, typically if you're going to be using like escort missions, you're typically going to do that in um, sea zones that are kind of far from your ports because so you're probably not going to need AA on these. So this would actually be, it's like a level one sub. It has a level two engine, which is good. So it's got a little bit of a faster engine. You don't need super good engines for escort duty because submarines are slow, but it's not, not, not the worst thing to start with like a decent, um, a decent amount of speed. It doesn't have, it has a dual purpose gun here. So it has a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of AA, but it's not even worth putting AA on this if it's just going to be escorting our convoys. So right away, I can just mark these ships. I use, or let's use this one. There we go. We can mark these ships as our escort ships i usually just mark them with that skull so that i know that they're like anti-submarine destroyers and like boom there we go so that what this one here and then we'll set it to auto update and what the auto update is going to do is it's going to update the sonar and it's going to update the depth charges if we get the technologies to update upgrade those right potentially also torpedoes if we go for that uh, having two torpedo bays here is like a little bit excessive i would say but uh eh, you never know it's not the not the end of the world but again the point of this is not to give you the best possible design the point of this is to like if we want to make this ship cheaper later where to go yeah if we want to make this ship cheaper later we could take off the torpedo tubes right 
Like nothing prevents us from taking off those tubes. Taking them off only costs one naval XP. So for two naval XP, we can have a very, very cheap ship, right? If we're done with our upgrades, we can stop auto upgrading this. We can even downgrade the engine if we want three XP, right? So this is just a cheap way to end up with a bunch of ships that you can make tiny, tiny changes to and end up with a wide variety of ships that you can use. So we're going to recommission that. We're going to set it to auto upgrade. Next up, let's take a look at the VW class. Uh, this ship here, it has anti-aircraft, the depth charges, it's got a dual purpose gun. So this could be good. This could be a good uh, screening DD. It could be a good cheap screening DD. It's got a level one engine. If you want to go even cheaper, we could go for the S class here. Uh, the S class uh, has uh, no anti-aircraft either. Uh, the other thing that we could do, though, is I don't find that anti-air is actually all that useful on your screening uh, destroyers. This one also has a it does not have the a dual purpose gun. It's got a little bit more light attack, which, you know, is arguably better than the dual purpose gun for the purpose of screening. So why don't we make the S class into our screen, auto update that and recommission it. So we're going to we're going to produce like a shit ton of really, really, really cheap destroyers that just have torpedo tubes and depth charges. And then we'll put those in our strike forces. This one here, it's a bit weird, but we could actually now this is not something that you would do a lot in single player, but in multiplayer, you could do this. And I do sometimes do it in single player just for just for the lols. Basically, we could turn this into a uh, we could turn this into a mine sweeping destroyer if we wanted to use a mine sweeping destroyer. I have actually had ships sunk to mines in single player. Not typically uh, that useful, but I'm just showing you how many different things you can do here. So it's not about whether you should actually use these designs, but yeah. So let's let's keep this around in case we want to make a mine sweeper. The reason why I would use the VW class for a mine sweeper is it's got a little bit of AA, and any ship that's going to be going into kind of hostile territory on its own, unaccompanied by like battleships and stuff like that, that's when AA becomes important on your screens, when they're likely to get attacked. Like if I'm going to send, sometimes the Italians like to mine like the Tyrrhenian Sea in the Adriatic. So if I'm going to send like a small squadron of minesweeper destroyers into uh, those to get rid of those mines, then I'm going to want them to have a little bit of anti-aircraft because they're, they're, you know, they might get attacked by aircraft. Are you going to build these? I don't know. That's not the point. The point is you could if you wanted to, and it's not going to cost you like any naval XP to do so, except like just sticking on the mine sweeping thing, right? Uh, let's take a look at the EFGH class here. The EFGH class is a level two hull. It's got a level two engine. It's got, uh, you know, this is like basically, this is a very fancy destroyer. Um, what I would do with this is I would turn this into our spotter destroyers. Uh, it's destroyers are the most effective spotters in the long term. Light cruisers are good in the short, in the early game because of the aircraft catapults, but they're not great because they have high surface visibility and they're not as fast as destroyers. So if you want to make like a really, really good um, 1936 spotter destroyer, all we have to do is set this to auto upgrade. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put the sonar in that slot. And we're going to remove this and put a radar once we unlock radar. And that's going to cost us a total of, I think, it's not going to cost us very much. It's going to cost us like less than 10, um, less than 10. And then the radar will automatically upgrade and we can just turn these out and use them as our uh, spotter destroyer. So for now, let's just reset it. We're going to set it to auto up, up, upgrade. Just make sure that I did that for all these ships here. So right away, what we've done here is we've laid the groundwork to have four different classes of destroyer, right? These three cheapies for like, you know, kind of cheap rolls. And this one is a little bit more of a specialized destroyer that's going to turn into a spotter destroyer in the long run. For everything that is cruiser and above, so light cruiser, heavy cruiser, battle cruiser, battleship, um, in terms of surface ships, auto upgrades are not a great idea or they're, they're you have to be careful with them because it's, it's going to automatically upgrade the uh, armor. So... It depends what you want to do. If you want to build a lot of new light cruisers and you want to have a lot of heavy armor, like that's something that you might do, say, as Germany. If you want to do like a, a really sort of cruiser build as Germany, um, then you might want to have like heavily, heavily armored cruisers because you're not going to build that many of them. Uh, the thing about armor, if you're building new ships, it's worth putting heavy armor on new ships. It's never worth refitting armor onto old ships. So just depends what you're going to do. Are you going to refit your your cruisers or are you going to build new cruisers? If you're building new cruisers, then this is fine. You can set it to auto update. In the case of the UK, I would not build new light cruisers. But you know what? We can give ourselves the choice to. So this cruiser starts with this cruiser starts with the aircraft catapult. If I decide to research the level two, then right away we can put like a better 
we can put like a better catapult on it and it'll get more surface detection right away. So one thing we could do is we're going to mark this right away as a potential spotter ship. We're going to set it to auto upgrade and we're going to hit save, right? So right away we have it. We have a choice there. We can use that. Um, we could also go for the uh, town class cruiser here. I would not necessarily build like a heavily armored light cruiser as Britain, but what I could do is set this to auto upgrade. So it's going to get the best armor possible. It's going to get the best, tur uh, the best like AA everything here possible. Mostly it's the armor that's going to upgrade and the um, fire control as well. What I would do with this is as soon as it upgrades automatically, I'm going to spend a little bit of naval experience. It's going to cost us 12 naval experience and we're going to just change out both batteries. Now we have a level two heavy cruiser that's only going to cost us 12 naval XP, right? If you design a heavy cruiser from scratch, it's going to cost you more like 30, 35 XP. So that's like a very cheaply designed heavy cruiser. All we're doing is iterating on our light cruiser design and turning it into a heavy cruiser design. Once again, that won't work for refits, but if you do want to build new heavy cruisers, it's the best way to do it. So let's set this to uh, auto up upgrade and that way we've got um that way we've got um two potential cruiser candidates that we can use uh the adventure class is a mine laying uh light cruiser i guess you could upgrade this give it better aa give it a better gun but it doesn't have any armor so it's pretty cheap to build Eh, let's see here yeah i mean you could set this to auto upgrade if you if you actually want to build a mine laying cruiser. Uh, I I tend to think that mine laying uh, cruisers are like kind of more expensive than the value they provide. But you know what? Just for kicks, let's do it. Let's just like we're giving ourselves what we're doing here is we're giving ourselves choices. We certainly wouldn't want to be using a level two hull on on this this cruiser. I just don't see that. Okay, in terms of these, these are old um, hulls that I wouldn't recommend building. So we're just going to straight up decommission anything that's level one and it's a capital ship. So that's pretty much everything. Um, if we want to build, uh, if we want to build a, a a modern battleship, what we could do is uh, go into the battleship design here. We could take maybe the Nelson class, or I think the Nelson class is the best one, and we could auto upgrade this if we do want to build. Uh, a 1936 one although that being said uh it's kind of like the aircraft we're gonna have to design it from scratch because yeah we're gonna have to design it from scratch because the uk does already starts with a 1936 heavy ship hull so it's not really worth uh, auto upgrading these so i just wouldn't bother at all actually like this is not even worth um upgrading at all and again if we set this to auto upgrade it's going to upgrade the armor actually it's not it's going to upgrade the the uh, guns here this one might be worth doing yeah, this one's worth doing. So you take a close look at your capital ships. This one already has the maximum. It has level two battleship armor, and it's got level two heavy batteries. So we can actually do this once. So we can re we can use this to refit the Nelson class. Uh, for the Queen Elizabeth class, it's only got level one armor. So we're going to have to manually refit this. So I wouldn't bother. We're going to have to manually make a new template from scratch. And we'll talk a little bit about um, uh, how to optimize that later. So that um, covers all of our examples. Let's look at what we've kept in our queue here. So now we can untick show outdated and we're just going to make sure what have we got in here? We've got um, a, we've got two submarine hulls we can work with. We've got four different destroyer rolls that we can work with. We can build a fucking mine lane cruiser if we want to. If we want to build any new uh, spotting cruisers, this is definitely uh, there's definitely a potential there. Uh, we've also got a cruiser here that can potentially be converted into a heavy cruiser. We've got one battleship that we're going to refit because the lots here make sense. Everything makes sense. So yeah. Uh, uh, the Arc Royal class as well, I forgot to do this. Let's set this to auto upgrade, it's just going to get better anti-air. Again, saving us tiny amounts of experience. J having done all of this, like individually designing each one of these ships would cost you probably over a hundred naval XP. And I know that naval XP is kind of easy to come by when you're, when you're exercising ships in the early game, but it's going to save you like up to 100 XP. So big deal, big deal. Fast forward to when we unlock some text and I'm gonna show you the results. What we can do, for example, we can do our standard production text and you're gonna say, oh, but what if I don't wanna research any naval text? What if I only wanna research land and air text? I don't wanna bother. Well, mechanical computing is a tech that applies, it will upgrade your ships, it will upgrade your 
um, your aircraft. Mechanical computing is a great one. Uh, the same goes, I believe, for this one. Uh, any of the radar techs will upgrade your tanks. It's, this is why it's really good to research at least one level of radar tank of radar tech because it will it will auto upgrade your ships it will auto upgrade your planes and it will auto upgrade your tanks because all three are affected by the radar tech so all we need to do is set up some basic research like this i'm going to stick in um range improvements so off screen i've done like a lot of the organization of like the army and navy and stuff like that uh and i just want to show you guys um a few little tips um that will help in terms of other ways of gaining army and navy and all that experience um, first of all, obviously I'm aware of the, uh, one division training exploit. It, you can certainly do that. There's lots of videos out there to show you how to do that. I'm not going to cover that in this one. It's a bit of an exploit. Uh, the disadvantage of it is that you end up having to rebuild your army from scratch, which is kind of annoying. So I, sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't, but I'm not going to cover that in this video. One thing I would say is do not, uh, do not exercise expensive divisions. Uh, so for example, I don't want to be exercising this Royal tank regiment. that's full of like light tanks because, uh, light tanks are expensive and, uh, you don't want to be building uh, light tanks. So I'm going to set these guys who are regular divisions. They have like support equipment and stuff. So I only want to get them up to regular. And then, um, I'm going to stop training them because it's just like a waste of expensive equipment to be training them. Um, long-term these colonial divisions, all the, they only have infantry equipment actually, except for the, um, that uh, this guy here, like I could change this guy to a colonial garrison here you know we don't want to be wasting support equipment it's, it's costs like eight times as much as infantry infantry equipment these ones can actually exercise in perpetuity it's just going to cost us a little bit of infantry equipment so you'll notice we have a little bit of a deficit of inf infantry equipment so we might actually want to hold off on this but uh, as long as we start like I've, I've put one extra factory into infantry equipment here so as long as we um, um, get this deficit done quickly, then we won't end up uh, paying for garrisons. So I'm just going to set this garrisons to high priority and set everything else to low priority. And that way uh, it will prioritize filling the garrisons first. And what we're going to do is we're going to monitor this and make sure that we're gaining infantry equipment once we unpause. If we're not gaining infantry equipment, then we should stop exercising. And it's this number here you want to look at. For your navy, uh, one thing I want to point out is uh, do not exercise subs indefinitely. So these subs here, I'm just going to set them to automatic split off, and then I'm going to shift K. You want to put these. You want to make sure that these stop um, exercising as soon as they as soon as they are done. Because if you look at the stats here, uh, submarines have really really low reliability they have 60 percent reliability uh even the better models of subs have 70 percent 80 uh 75 percent and then even the 1944 submarines have um 80 only 80 percent reliability whereas like our 1922 destroyers already have 80 percent these ones have 85 and once we get up to here it's like 90 what is that 92 percent or whatever so uh, it's just a much better idea to be exercising your normal ships rather than your subs. So just don't exercise your subs past um, regular. These guys here, we can just exercise indefinitely. The other thing we can do when we're exercising ships is we don't really want to be wasting dockyards. So, but I'm going to set this down to zero, like up here, the repair queue. It's going to tell you how many dockyards you put to repair ships. So if ships get damaged, I'm just going to let them, they're going to go to port. They're just going to sit there and then we're going to repair them once we have better modifiers. Like we can actually grab um, naval refit yards to get 15% repair speed. And that way we're not wasting dockyards and we can finish up these starting ships faster and start building what we want to build faster uh, so that we're not using dockyards to repair ships just while we're doing like endless exercises. The other thing we can do is the UK, uh, and this is kind of UK specific, is go to our subjects here. Uh, Malaya has 17 oil for one civilian factory. So we're trading one civilian factory to get like substantially more naval experience. That's a really good way to get more naval experience. You might think that naval experience, there's a lot of it, but you, you have a lot of things to spend naval experience on. So uh, I would get as much as you can early on. Uh, for, for the Air Force, um, I can take, because I decided I'm going to be building these uh, interwar close air supports. So I've got 300 of them already. We can deploy those 300 because they're, they're airplanes. That, they're actually airframes that we're going to use. And I'm going to shift K here. Uh, it's it, air, air exercises get you very, very, very little experience. So it's never worth exercising these past, uh, past regular. 
you're not exercising them for the XP, you're exercising them for the stat boost that you get from having fully exercised um, aircraft. There we go. So you can see that we have, we have a positive balance. Um, we have a surplus of infantry equipment, so it's safe to be exercising these armies. If this was negative, we would have to stop exercising them and wait until our infantry equipment catches up. You can see we're losing a lot of airframes. This is why airframes are really expensive. This is why we don't really want to be exercising these past, um, once they get to um, level four, we can stop exercising them. In fact, while we're exercising the Navy, probably best to turn these off because we're using up all of our fuel and we're not going to exercise them very quickly. So do the Navy first, then, then pause the Navy, then go back to the Air Force. Okay, so it's 20th of February. We have 35 Navy experience, so right away we can grab... Um, this is a really good one to grab early on, Naval Refit Yards. Um, you're Even if you're not going to be refitting for like another year or two, uh, the repair speed is, is, is worth it. So this is one of the few ones of these that's really worthwhile taking uh, super early on. Uh, you could also argue that like integrated designers or uh, Naval Reform, Naval reform, um, keep in mind, like, what are we getting here? We're getting 0.47 naval extras, like, from naval exercises, and that's why we're buying an extra fuel. So, uh, you know, crunch the numbers. What's 15% of 0.47? It's like, it's it's not a lot. Um, and so this is going to take years to pay off. I don't really advise doing this. So we'll grab a naval refit yards. So once we have a surplus of infantry equipment, we can start recruiting new divisions. I just want to focus for now on recruiting divisions that only have infantry equipment because again, I'm going to use these to get some army experience, but I don't want to be building anything that uses a lot of support equipment. We can change these divisions over to divisions with support equipment and stuff later. So it's now March of 1936. Range improvements has completed. So let's take a look at what that gives us. So like I said, range improvements affects carrier naval air aircraft. So it's done. All of our naval updates are done. What can we do here? We've also got a little bit of naval experience, so we can actually start uh, making these designs right away. Now let's go through all these designs that we made, starting with the submarines. The OPR class we said was going to be a mine laying submarine. So now we've got a new model. We can call it like just mine laying subs. That's five experience. We got a mine laying sub. This one here has the two torpedo tubes and it's also got the level two engine. So that's like already an upgrade. No, we'll just we'll just leave it. It's early submarine mark three. That's fine. Uh, here we've got our four different uh, destroyer classes. This one is ready to go as an anti-submarine warfare one. ASW destroyer. So once again, it, this one doesn't need anything else. If if we want to make them cheaper, let's take off the Torpedo tubes. We don't need torpedoes to fight subs. So uh, we can we can call this uh, an ASW destroyer. It's going to cost 914 to build. So this is actually like a pretty solid ASW destroyer. Sometimes I, I like to call these Corvettes. So we'll call this an ASW Corvette. Once again, these are still set to auto update. So when we get better depth charges, or um, better uh, um, ASW. If we want to as well, we could maybe put a an additional depth charge on this just so that it has more submarine attack. So yeah, let's do that. So we've spent like a total of, again, five Navy experience, and we've got like a pretty useful uh, ship that we can build here. This is going to be our minesweeping destroyer. It's got a little bit of anti-air in case it encounters the enemy. I could take the depth charge off. It's actually cheaper to just put the two-speed sweep on it and keep the depth charges. So, you know, if it encounters submarines, it can do the depth charge thing. Uh, it costs an additional point to do this. So that's another five naval XP, and we've we've got a minesweeping destroyer. And this is our basic screen destroyer. Uh, we don't need to change anything here. It doesn't need anti-air because it's going to be in fleets that have capital ships with a lot of anti-air on them. So we're just going to call this screen DD. It can cause zero experience to design. This one here is going to turn into our our spotter destroyer. For a spotter destroyer, we're actually going to remove. We're actually going to we're actually going to remove this eventually, but uh, we don't have enough experience right now. So let's just do this. I'm going to unpause for a second. There we go. One naval experience, and and this is all set so that it's going to upgrade. It's going to upgrade, and it's going to be a really really excellent kind of beefy destroyer that's going to be able to go out on its own. Um, and if it encounters enemy air, it's going to have a little bit of anti-air. If it encounters enemy ships, it's going to be able to fire off a couple of torpedoes as it, as it, as it retreats. Uh, you could argue that you could take the torpedo tubes off and just have it be uniquely focused on uh, patrolling. This slot is left empty so that we can put radar on it. There we go. So we've, we've got four classes. We've got four classes of destroyers that are all going to continue to auto upgrade as the relevant equipment for those destroyers does. And that all these four ships only cost me, I think it was under 20, was it like 5, 10? It was like 15 experience for all of these ships. I'm just going to put another technology in the slot here. Uh, let's go for the uh, 1936 light tank so we can we can get that better, um, better tank chassis. 
We can switch over our production of light tanks to uh, the more modern chassis. We don't have any air experience, but what we do have is the Ferry Gordon has an upgrade. So this is the interwar close air support airframe. Let's just um, give it that so that we can tell what it is. Uh, we don't really have any air experience to to put any additional modules on this, but right away we've already gone to the level two engine. So we're going to keep um, we're going to keep refitting these old airframes. We're going to put new engines on them. So we're going to call this interwar pass and we can just do this right away. So again, we lose a little bit of production efficiency, but we're already putting we're already putting more engines like better better engines on these airframes so that later on we can continue to add modules that are going to be useful like additional bomb locks or um uh, range improvements once we get some air experience same goes for the interwar carrier bomber interwar carrier nav let's make this that one so we can remember what it is once again for zero experience we're just going to throw that on there now we're just waiting for a little bit we need 12 naval experience so that we can do our heavy cruiser okay that's 12 naval experience we're getting very quickly right now uh, we're going to go in here we're going to go over to our cruisers here like i said we're not really going to touch these they're just going to stay that way this is going to become a heavy cruiser model so what we're going to do is we're going to go medium battery turn it into a heavy battery there heavy battery there so we have to replace any batteries that are on it we have to replace uh this now is a brand new 1936 level cruiser hull the, U U the uk does not start with a designed um heavy cruiser hull so we'll call this 1936 heavy cruiser now uh do i want to keep these torpedo tubes probably not uh, do I want to replace them with like another battery or an anti-air thing? Uh, possibly, but I don't really need to make that choice right now. So I'm just going to take the 12 um, Naval XP that I have. I'm going to design this. I'm going to switch it over to that icon so I can remember what it is. And you see now it's actually disappeared from the light cruiser interface and it's in the heavy cruiser interface. Now, uh, because of the late Naval treaties, we're not actually allowed to build this right now, but we're going to leave it in here. We're going to let it auto upgrade. So we're going to have this heavily armored beefy. It goes, it, it can do 30 knots, which is as fast as early, uh, uh, the early war carriers that we're going to be building. So this can keep up with our carriers and it's a, a lot beefier than the, the old, um, uh, county class heavy cruisers that we have here. And we're just going to leave that on auto update. And we'll, this is something that we can work on as we're going to have a heavy cruiser program later on, but we've already got just for 12 XP, we've got like the, the basic blueprint for what we're going to be do doing later. We also, uh, this, this was a refit of the Nelson class because the Nelson class had the full armor and the level two batteries. So we can call this Nelson class refit i think it just got some better aa or something yep it got better aa and and better better light armaments if i want to right away just so i don't forget to do that i can actually go into my navy here find the nelson class there we go nelson and rodney i'm gonna put them into a separate fleet so we this is we can just call this refits and we can actually queue this up right away we might want to wait till we get some radar or something else but it doesn't really matter either way so nelson nelson class refits there we go you can see that it's like it's a pretty reasonable cost. How do I seven thousand? What updated on that? What upgraded on that? I'm curious. This might not be worth doing, to be honest. Oh, the engine. Yeah. Okay. So we're not going to do this. So that's actually not useful. So we're not going to refit those at all. So let's. Um, th this is why, it, like I said, you don't generally use this for refits. You're going to use it for something else. Although, actually, hang tight. If we spend three XP. Wait till we get three XP. Now the refit's going to cost two thousand. So that's the equivalent of building two destroyers. So for two destroyers, we're going to add um, a bunch of uh, air attack on onto these. It's air attack in particular that we're getting a little bit of light attack, a little bit of air attack. Like it's it's is that worth doing? I'm not sure. I'm going to use John Brown and Co. Those can just go to the bottom of the queue. Take an ex extra hanger on this aircraft carrier. It's going to cost again just five XP. There we go. So we've got this. We've got this refit for for our carrier. It's going to give it a little bit of better anti air. Um, I want to talk about attaches as a means of getting um, army, navy, and uh, air experience. It's a good idea to send attaches out. Don't get me wrong, but don't use attaches for experience. Use them for changing your economy. Uh, if if you if you don't need to change your economy law, or if you're if you it's not that's not the build that you're going to go for. Uh, go for like um, a, an air reformer or or a naval reformer one of these chief of army the best ones for experience are the reformers i would pick like this reformer early and i would 
switch it over to a more combat focused one once the war starts but in the early game this one is going to be the best for um for experience game the same goes for navy we don't have a reformer for the uk we don't have a reformer for the for the army either but we're going to try and like uh pick these if we want to get experience uh if if we want to change if we want to move off of um civilian economy then we're going to do the uh attache but just keep in mind the attache is not for exp you're not doing it for the experience you're doing it for the economy laws okay so we finished service overseas and that's given us 25 air experience and then we sent an attache here which is going to allow us to change economy laws um what i would do next here uh we've got 25 air experience so remember remember like i said um we are going to have to design a fighter from scratch so there's a couple of things that i would do that are going to save you uh, air experience in the long run. What we need right now is a carrier fighter and a land-based fighter, if we want to build both those things. But now we've got 25 air XP. So what I would start by doing is just design something like this. We're just going to call that like basic fighter. Um, and we're going to save this. Five, that's five XP right there. Next up, put this in production. This is a bit of a trick here. Put this in production. Now it's in the queue. While it's in the queue, Go back and add any modules that you want to add. So I want in, in this case, I want to add drop tanks and I want to add a second uh, set of machine guns. Now we're going to call this, I don't know, the hurricane, let's say. So in total, that's cost us eight XP. Now, why did we do it this way? Because now what we have, we have an airframe here. Once we're tired of building these interwar airframes, all we need to do is spend one one XP. Now this is a cast. See what I did there? So we've we've we don't want to have to select the engine again when we want to make the cast. And we don't want to have to. If we were to go to the hurricane here, we want to make this a cast. Now that costs like four XP. See what I'm saying? So you know, if you want to put drop tanks on your basic fighter too, like if like I would put probably put drop tanks on this right away. There we go. So you just what you're doing here is you're making a lowest common denominator design. You're putting the bare minimum amount of slots that you want. I would want drop tanks on all of my fighters, or I might even go to um, I might even go to uh, extra fuel tanks. But so this is three XP, and all we're gonna do is spend an additional two XP. If we want a naval bomber, we just spend two XP. If we want to cast, we spend two XP. Then we can fill out additional slots as we want, but we don't want to be like redoing things. Now that's a little bit of a nitpicky one, but it's definitely worth doing. So the basic fighter we're actually gonna put into uh, we're gonna decommission it, but we're just gonna save it in case we want to uh, redesign things later. And. Uh, here we can, we're going to do the hurricane. We're going to make sure that we put auto upgrade on and this is, uh, ready to go. I'm not sure if there's any other modules I would put, maybe the radio navigation or something, who knows? Uh, so we're going to put the hurricane into production. There we go. And we'll get that producing as soon as possible. We're also going to need a, uh, carrier fighter. So once again, same principle, we're going to go and grab the basic carrier airframe. We do need to build this from scratch. Uh, we're going to do the same principle. We're going to do basic carrier fighter. Uh, we don't need drop tanks. I don't, well, it depends if you want to micro your carrier, if you want to micro your carrier aircraft, put drop tanks on them or put an extra fuel tank or what have you, uh, I'll do it just for kicks. So that's uh, six XP basic carrier fighter. Uh, and then I'm going to put that into production because if you don't put it into production, it's just going to update the template. At the minute you put it into production, it makes a new template because we're essentially duplicating templates here. That's the principle. I don't know if that make, if that's clear. Now we're going to call this Sea Hurricane, and we'll start producing that as soon as we have the factories. But one final design. Remember I said we were going to take these old um, Hanley Page airframes and turn them into naval aircraft? So these are naval patrol bombers. Check this out. What we can do here is we can put on uh, an extra fuel tank to give it 50% uh, more range, uh, and we can put this non-strategic materials use so that it's, uh, it's extra cheap to produce. And that gives us... We have just enough... Uh, wait to do uh, port strike and that allows us to have essentially what I'm going to call a naval patrol. I'm going to call it like a naval patrol bomber. Uh, this is going to allow us to do naval patrol. We don't need very many of these. All we're doing is refitting um, old airframes in order to um, make use of those old airframes and this is going to make it as cheap as humanly possible. Five per year, one per month. 
So keep in mind that you only need air groups of 10 of these. They can have a pretty major effect on the naval game. Uh, and so, yeah, these are just like, this is a really great use of 240. Uh, and it doesn't cost us any aluminum. We're using airframes that we already have. Uh, it's a really, really cost effective use. And all of that, we just designed how many new airframes? We've got one, two, three airframes uh, designs. Uh, and all, you know, we've done all of that, um, with, with very, very, very little air experience. I think we got 25 air experience. We, and we, and we, and with 25 air experience, we designed like three airframes, uh, three new airframes. And then we also got some freebies in there too. Uh, let's, uh, take a look here. If we wanted to, uh, continue to improve these, we've got a little bit of, um, air XP left. So something like that, uh, we can do, uh, this, we can upgrade this interwar cast. That's uh, only three air experience and we've already doubled its ground attack and, uh, we're still getting it very, very cheaply. We've doubled its ground attack and we're refitting old planes, uh, to be slightly longer range. So this is already a much better, it's got a better engine. It's got better range. It's got twice the ground attack. And all we're doing is using these 600 old fighters. Uh, so that, that to me is like a really, really, really good deal. Uh, same thing with the CV nav. If we really want to, the CV nav, uh, if you're not going to micro these, it's probably not worth doing, but I would still be tempted to stick, uh, drop tanks on it because I like to micro my, my carrier bombers. So there we go. 25 air experience. And we got upgrades of all of these planes. We got one, uh, forget the transport plane. I just stuck that in there for, for lols, but one, two, three, four, five, six uh, new airframes, uh, some of which are up upgrades and some of which are new airframes. So six new airframes out of 25 air experience. When you are short on experience in the early game, uh, this stuff saves you tons and tons and tons and tons of um, uh, experience and stuff like that. Finally, I want to talk about, uh, we have 62 naval experience here, so I want to talk about um, refits. So as I mentioned, uh, you can, like as we saw here, you can't really use this for refits. I mean, we ended up we ended up just like manually downgrading the engine. Let's um, we don't want to auto we don't want this to auto improve. So let's just uh, do that. So it's not going to auto improve anymore. This is going to be the final version of the Nelson class, unless we want to throw uh, radar on it or something. It's just not worth doing any more upgrades on that ship. Um, so what you want to do is you want to figure out what ships you have a lot of. Um, and you can do that by going into the equipment details here. So I own, I don't think it's worth re, uh, refitting light hulls, and I don't think it's worth uh, refitting light cruisers. Uh, you can refit light cruisers if you want, but you can't turn them into heavy cruisers. So light cruisers, uh, I don't really think it's worth it. Um, it might be worth it to put more light attack on a light cruiser. It might be worth it to put um, more light attack on a heavy cruiser uh, or heavy attack on a heavy cruiser. What you want to refit is going to base, be based on like what strategies you're going to use. But the most important thing when you're refitting ships, look through the designs that you have. Only refit, only spend the naval experience to refit ships if you have many of them. So for example, I don't want to spend a bunch of naval XP refitting the Hawkins class heavy cruiser. I've only got three of them. I don't want to spend like 20 naval XP to refit three heavy cruisers. It's just not worth it. For the heavy ships, same thing here. We've only got two Renown classes, one Admiral class, that's the, the hood, and, and the two Nelson classes. We didn't spend any XP. I think we spent three XP to refit the two Nelsons. That's fine. Um, but I would not want to spend 20 naval XP to ex to, to refit the Nelson class. Uh, the Queen Elizabeth class and the Revenge class actually have the same modules pretty much. So that's 10 battleships. Now that's a worthwhile refit. So let's go and grab the Queen Elizabeth class here. And we're going to do pretty standard refit, which is essentially just putting more anti-air um, dual purpose guns just like cheap cost effective refits so again that's 20 naval experience for the refit you see why i don't do this all the time uh we could also i don't think we have any bonuses here so this is not worth doing but yeah so th this is like a reasonably worthwhile um refit here let's call this the qe class refit uh there's one final refit that i want to show you guys and this is this is a bit of an exploit i think it's an oversight on the developers parts if we take a look at the um converted battleship hulls uh, so this one, you'll notice here, this one has a level one engine and the, there's two types of engines here. It's actually using a heavy ship engine. This is a level one heavy ship engine. You've got the carrier engines too. So whereas the courageous class here uses a level two heavy engine. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to take the courageous class. I should have auto updated the um, air, but I'll just do that. We're going to take the Courageous class, we're going to stick a Carrier Engine 2 on it. 
this is more expensive. I should have, I forgot to um, tick this one so that it would auto update. So we're going to do that and check this out. The level two carrier engine doesn't cost anything. Check this out. So if I go heavy engine two, 900 refit cost, carrier engine two, 843 refit cost. So it actually costs us less to go to a carrier engine and it does increase the speed. That's uh, 0 0.1, 1.2 engine speed and it's actually free. So I'm going to go with um, the courageous class like this. We're going to call this courageous class refit. And we can also take the Eagle class, which has two instead of three decks here. And it's also free for this one. Check it out. So it actually costs nothing to refit it. So let's go uh, and grab those ships. Where is the Eagle class? There's the courageous. I'm going to do that. See, 20, 2,500 to give us an, an extra flight deck, a faster engine. And this engine is a lot faster. It's like five knots faster. Oh, it's 3.7 knots faster. So um, we can take this, this old converted battleship with a shitty old battleship engine, and we're going to put a carrier engine in, and that's free. And I don't know why that's free, and I feel like it's an exploit, but we're still going to do it. And we've done all of that. Like, all of our naval production has been organized here for less than 50 naval experience in total. I think it's like 30 or 40, including two expensive refits. Uh, the other ship class that we could refit if we wanted to, and we're not, I'm not going to do it right now um, because the naval treaty is going to restrict us from doing it, but the other class that might be worth doing is these county classes. We've got 13 of them, so we could also go in and spend additional experience to refit the um, the county class here, and that would just involve essentially probably putting anti-air uh, dual purpose turrets and stuff like that. We're not going to be able to do that right now, but basically the, the principle here is you only want to ref you don't want to be spending um, a bunch of naval experience refitting ships that are, um, that you only have like two of or three of. It's really only worth doing if you're going to be refitting lots of ships. Now, obviously, if you're playing as Germany or playing as a country that has a smaller navy, it might be worth refitting those ships because you might, it might be worth it to have like one or two really powerful ships ships rather than having one or two kind of shitty ships um so but i'm just saying is the uk is the usa is big naval powers uh look for classes that are numerous that where there's many ships in the class because then you're getting the most bang for your buck out of your naval xp spent okay the last thing i want to show you guys is our uh our new uh basic light tank so as I said, what we have here now is rather than having to spend stuff and design this from scratch, we've already saved at least six XP grabbing the Christie suspension. I think this is perfectly fine as a light tank, uh, as a light tank recon. So I'm going to put this into production right away and start producing the 1936 model. So uh, I really, uh, I really do think that these are all really good strategies to uh, save on XP. Just using the auto update feature really uh, intelligently is is a really key idea. If I wanted to put other modules on this, I could like maybe a radio or whatever. But like you know, that's a, that's a separate conversation. What modules you want to put on it? But right away, we've saved, like, we have not spent any army XP at all. We've gotten that army XP there just from uh, drilling the, uh, exercising the few units that we have in the start of the game. We don't even have, like, the dude here. Here we go, grab partial mobilization. We don't even have a dude here or anything. We don't, we don't have to spend any, any army XP. We spent a little bit of navy XP to do a whole bunch of refits, and we've got, we now have, like, a full menu of ships that we can build. We've got a bunch of very functional designs. You might want to tweak these a bit. You might want to make them cheaper. You might want to make them fancier. But basically, you've heavily, heavily, heavily minimized the amount of uh, naval XP that you're going to spend in order to build these ships. So I hope this is useful. Let me know if you want to see other stuff. Let me know if you have any questions, and I will make more Hearts of Iron 4 content. Uh, thanks for watching, and see you next time.